for um, today's session. He is a technical designer with the mixed reality team here in Lagos. He used to be a software engineer in the same team. Um, and before joining Microsoft, um, was running his own game studio in Abuja. He um, is the, one of the best game developers I know. Um, and he's going to be walking us through building a, getting started building a Unity app today. Over to you, DJ. <clears throat> okay, hi. Um, can everyone see my screen? Yeah, we can. Okay, cool. Um, so with the introduction that Kendra has given, I don't really have much to say. Um, so my name is Adede Jogundipe, but um, I'm generally known as DJ. Um, a little bit about me is, like you said, I used to be a game developer, now I'm a technical designer. But the core thing to note is ever since I was a kid, I've been very interested in uh, video games, particularly how they are made and how to break them. But um, so that interest has kind of been the driving force for my career and my education and everything and stuff like that. Um, so how did I get to where I am currently? I studied computer games development at the University of Bedfordshire in the UK. Um, then did my master's in game design at Fulso University in the US, and then ran my game studio for a couple of years. We made a few mobile games, um, most notably Kekel and Run 1 and 2. And um, after a couple of years, I got a job as a software engineer at Microsoft. And as uh, he spent one year as a software engineer, slightly over a year as a software engineer, and moved to a technical design role because I felt like it was a better fit for my skill set. And yeah, that's a bit about me. So here are things that interest me uh, Magic the Gathering, Doctor Who, Pokemon, uh, fantasy novels, and Unity. Basically, uh, building stuff with Unity. So today we are going to be. Uh, wait, before I jump into that, um, does anybody have any questions, comments, whatevers? I will take that as a no. Okay. So. Um, Today we are going to be building a Unity project, um, a very small uh, game in Unity 2D, not 3D this time around, uh, to introduce you to the concepts of the general concept around Unity and showcase how easy it is to go from an empty project to building a relative, relatively simple game. Um, so the first thing I'll be doing is showing you the end product. Um, this is a basic game where you play as the orange objects and your aim is to collect objects of the same type as you. So as a circle, you collect a circle, square, Right, and each time you collect the correct thing, your score goes up by two. And each time you collect the wrong thing, your score drops by one. So it's pretty simple. And I'll be showing you how to build this with relative ease. Um, at the end of this session, I'll be sharing the scripts as well. So if you want to follow along, that would be great. Um, so to get started, I am going to create a new Unity project, and I am going to call this MLSA AMA Project Live, and select the 2D templates. 
um, templates in Unity basically um, allow you to create empty projects that are configured towards a specific um, goal. So the 2D, 3D, the main difference in them is for 3D, it kind of sets up the lighting and uh, the default scene view and a couple of other background optimizations. But today we'll be using 2D. Okay. Do, do, do. So we're creating a new project. Uh, while it's loading, um, does anybody have any questions? Comments? Funny remarks? Jokes? Just to be clear, you can hear me, right? Yes, you can. Uh, okay. Um, so we, <coughs> can we, because like we have a lot to cover. Out. Yeah. Because of the amount of stuff you have to cover, I'll suggest just going through it. Um, anybody that has questions can type it into the chat, and then we can have the question at the session afterwards. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I have okay. a question. Yes. Yeah, like on the average, how long does it take to really like get started? Like, I can see creating a new project took some time. Like, I'm just there's just like a random question, like related to like starting maybe web development projects or like a basic C sharp project and just to do. To compare to all that, how long does this one take? Uh, just a couple of minutes, and as you can see, um, the project has loaded as it is. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to run through the uh, tabs we have here for uh, Unity. So these are the main places where you'll be getting where you'll be doing um, all of your work and stuff. Um, the hierarchy is a list of all the game objects that are in your scene. Um, think of a scene as kind of like a web page in your on your website, right? Um, so there are components on that web page. So here you have a list of uh, game objects. If I create a new one, you can see. Uh, I can name it new object one, right? Pretty simple. Um, the each object in Unity, yeah, as you can see, so when I select them, if something changes here, this is the inspector. Um, if you use Visual Studio, you can think of the inspector as kind of like the properties tab that shows you uh, properties of the object you've selected. Uh, so here you have the main camera, the inspector. You can go through and look and kind of like pick different components that you can attach to your game object. I would go into that a bit more. Uh, so think of the hierarchy as a list of all the game objects in your scene. Uh, the scene here is the view of your game world as it is currently. So you can add this. So anything you add in the in the hierarchy is reflected in the scene. So like the main camera is this object here. Uh, what else? Uh, the game view is what people would, is what you see or what people would see when they are playing your game. And your project is kind of like your solution view in Visual Studio that um, lists all the assets that are in your project. And then your console shows out um, shows outputs from um, scripts or messages in your code. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a couple of folders in your assets folder. So you select this and do, 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 you can click on the plus button here to create a new folder. I am going to call this scripts. The scripts folder is where you're going to keep all the scripts that you write for the 
Um, another way of creating assets here, instead of clicking the plus button is you can right click here, click create and another folder. Um, here we'll be creating a prefabs folder. And the last thing we'll, last folder we'll be creating is called the um, sprites folder. So prefabs are kind of like template objects that you can reuse in your project. Uh, sprites are basically 2D images that you can use to uh, to hold graphics. Um, Unity comes with some pre-built sprites, so I am going to be creating three sprites here. Uh, here we're going to be creating a square. Uh, we're going to be creating a circle, and we're going to be creating an isometric diamond. Okay. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to import. Uh, I'm just going to copy off the scripts from the previous project here just to save a bit of time. Um, I will be sharing this script uh, later on, and it will be a zip file. All you have to do is copy the contents of that zip file into the scripts folder in your assets folder, which is, also, which is in your project. Right. OK, so now we're going to be creating our objects. Um, the first thing we're going to create is an empty object that we're going to use as our player. Um, we're going to rename the player, the game object, the empty game object we just created as player. And as you see, I changed the name of the inspector. It changed in the hierarchy as well. And then I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to select the main camera. Um, if you're in a 3D view, you'll see that this is perspective instead of autographic. Please change it to autographic. I'm going to be setting the size to eight. <clears throat> uh, a size of eight basically means that the um, view of the camera is larger, so you can see more on the screen. Okay. Um, with that done, I am going to move the player character to a position of zero and minus six point five. Um, you'll see why in a bit. And then I'm going to click Add Components, and I am going to search for my player script. As you can see, it shows up here. When I click that, it automatically adds in. Um, a bunch of the dependencies, so like the rigid body, sprite renderer, box 2D, collider, and then the player script itself. Then we are going to assign this, the sprite renderer for the player, we're going to assign a sprite here, and we're going to be picking the circle. And then we're also going to be changing the color to orange. Um, feel free to use whatever color you like. And we're going to be setting it to play as most speed to 10, I guess. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a box for the floor. And here we're going to create another empty game object. Uh, let's reset its position. So to bring up the context menu, you right click on the components you want to do stuff with. So here I'm just going to click reset to set its position to zero 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 rotation to zero zero zero. All right, I'm going to rename this as ground, and then I'm going to add a component here that is a sprite renderer. The sprite renderer. Um, is the component that lets <clears throat> the game object know that it can accept uh, sprites as images. And here we're going to use a square. And if you check in the game view, we have both our player and the ground as a simple square. Now at this point, I'm going to disable the player scripts just for a second. Um, each of the uh, components have toggles you can click. I'm going to disable the player 
script for a bit, move it above the ground and press play. And you would see that the player automatically falls through the ground. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the ground all the way down. Um, so to bring out this handle, the movement handle, you can click on this button right here, which is the move tool, which allows you to move on the Y axis, on the Z axis. Alternatively, you can set the position you want manually. Uh, that's minus, uh, minus 7.5. So bring that down there. And then um, if you select the scale tool, you can then expand this to cover the entire screen. Um, if I press play again, you notice that the player falls through the ground again. So what I'm going to do to prevent that from happening is select the ground game object and add a box collider to the component that um, lets the objects collide with other objects that also have colliders and rigid bodies on them. So if I press play now, you'd see that the player huh, still falls through. Interesting. Uh, give me one second. Do, do, do. Uh, 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 uh. Let's reset. Uh, ah, I see. So, so I'm going to reset. I'm going to select the player and reset its box collider so that its size is one and one. Um, when I press play now, see, it lands on the box on the ground. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a UI text item. I'm going to call it score text. And what you can see now is that we have a text down here that says new text. Um, for this, we are going to increase the size to, uh, let's say, 25. And you can see the score is here. And if uh, the text is down there, and if we change the alignment to the middle, it comes to the middle here. And then what we can do is, do, 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 if you click on this dongle right here, or this gizmo here, you see it's you can set the anchor and the pivots and everything. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to hold shift. As you can see, uh, it highlights a couple of points, which is where it's going to move the item to. Uh, so we're going to do shift and also, also set the position and click the stretch on both axes button here, which moves the text to the top here. So what we'll then do is we'll move this to the middle. So under the alignment, we'll select this middle button here. We bring the text to the middle and we're going to set the number to zero. And then we're just going to take the size up to something silly like 200. And then change the alpha of the color, which makes it transparent. Next, we are going to select the player. Here it's, you can see. I'm going to enable this now. Here you can see we have move speed here at zero and score text at um, none. So we are going to click the little um, radio button here to bring out a menu where you can select from the asset in your um, scene. And I'm going to select the score text. So that is now, it now shows up here. I would explain how that is connected soon. Um, now that we have the player script, so you can press play and the player falls, and then you can move left and right. As you can see, it's moving slowly. To move left and right, we're using A and B. Um, I'm going to increase the player speed to 100, and as you can see, it moves faster. Let's double it and take it to 200, and there we go. 
All right, we have the player moving. Now, because of where this is, if we move the player from as probably falling off of the world, and as you can see, that's it falling down there, and there's no way to recover from that yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to build uh, we're going to build walls around the edge of the stage. Right. Um, so an easy way of doing that is just to duplicate the ground and call it a wall. Du -du -du. And then here we're going to set the scale on the X to be one, the scale on the Y to be 16. Um, we're using 16 because remember on the camera we have the size as eight. So um, double that will give us um, the total height of the screen. So we're going to move the wall over here. Uh, we're going to duplicate this wall and also move it here. And because it has a, a box collider and the sprite renderer, I can now press play and the player falls. Oh, I did not. So a key thing to remember is whatever changes you make while you are playing in Unity get reverted when you stop playing. So if I also take this to 250, save, that's Control S, press play. You then have this as it is, and then boom. You can't go past the wall because it has a box collider that's blocking you from exiting the stage. Uh, okay, now we're gonna go super fast by uh, creating a new empty object. We're going to rename it as a collectible, collectible item. Um, we are going to reset its position, and we're going to add a component that is collectible item. Yep. Uh, OK. So what we're then going to do is we're going to assign the sprites to it. Square and asymmetric diamond. Uh, da, 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 and OK, and then we're going to put this over here, I guess, and we'll move the player to the very close to the floor and first play. And what happens is we have the object. It falls, hits the ground, and disappears. OK. Um, next, in, next thing we're going to do is we are going to create a prefab of this object. So to create a prefab, you can right-click, create prefab, and then give it a name or whatever, but I cancel that. Well, an easier way is to select the item you want in the hierarchy <clears throat> and drag it into the prefabs folder and that automatically creates a prefab for you. Um, an advantage of using prefabs is that you can then easily make multiple copies of the same object, right? And then um, if you select the prefab in the assets folder, you can change a property of that um, object and all the instances of the prefab will get updated to whatever it was that you changed it to. Which is pretty cool, saves a lot of time. OK, so if we press play now. We have that happening. OK, next thing we want to do is build a system. I'm just going to delete all of this one. Build a system that automatically creates um, the collectible item. So I am going to create an empty object, going to reset its position and then move it up a bit. And I'm going to add a component that says item spawner. Now this item spawner takes an offset. The, um, so the idea behind the item spawner is it's supposed to be randomly picking anywhere on the, on the X axis and spawning uh, the collectible objects at an interval of two seconds, right? Um, but you need to add a collectible item prefab, so you can click this button, go to assets. Interesting, doesn't show up there. Um, you can just drag this collectible item here, and that shows up, 
um, the offset then, like if you put an offset of two, it prevents the item spawner from spawning items here and here. So that's one on each side, which is pretty impressive. And if you check the object, you'll notice that it has a uh, scale of one. So that's cool. Um, I need to rename this to item spawner. Okay, so if I press play now, to do He created that, and then two seconds later, I create another one, and another one, and another one. Okay. Um, so what we'll do is we'll drop this down to one, and press play. And you can then pick up the items, and the score changes. When you pick the wrong one, your score drops. Um, so, two, oops, so that's zero, and it is designed such that your score can never go below zero. So it's randomly selecting the ones to pick, and like so. So that is basically the game. Uh, I'm going to duplicate the ground and put it over at the top here, and then a thing I can do to make um, life easier is I can select the ground walls and then under the sprite renderer, change the color to black. Just for the fun of it, you can use whatever color you like and you can see it looks a bit better. And with this, we basically cut up to the um, original projects that I showed. Right, okay, so um, next thing I'm going now I'm going to do is I'm gonna run through the scripts that we wrote for this. So open the script you just duplicated and it and it would open the ID you have set for that's the default for um, it's, I think it's not in this Visual Studio community edition 2019, I guess. Um okay. So please let me know if you can read the text if it's not so small. So the player script has a public variable for the speed, uh, public uh, text for uh, the text. So public variables show up in Unity as fields in the inspector that you can edit. Um, and here <clears throat> we are basically caching the components that are attached to the object, so the rigid body and the sprite renderer. Um, update is called every frame, <clears throat> so it gets called multiple times a second, so we want to call the move function multiple times a second. And in here is very, very basic um, method that checks if you are pressing the A button, the A key, or the D key. If you're pressing the A key, it moves the object by move speed. That's uh, to the left, and because here we're using positive, so that goes to the right. And we have scripts that update the type we have here. Um, it's an item type, which is an, an enum, where we define the item types that we allow in the game. So the diamond, circle, and square. And then um, on collision, enter is called automatically by Unity when two objects collide. And in here, the first thing we do is we check if the item we collided with has a is a collectible item. If it isn't, we just exit out of the method. If it is, we cache the object. Um, if I haven't explained that yet, I would explain it in a minute. I'm just getting there. So um, here we cache the collectible item, right, by getting the component here. And then we check if the type of 
the collectible item we collided with is the same as the um, player's type. If it is, we update this call by two, which is calling this method here. And in here, we add the amount and we clamp it so that it can never go below zero and can never go above 999. Uh, Eugene, you will be getting the scripts at the end of the video. I'll share a link to them. I'll post them in the chat actually. Um, and then this updates the sprite to the correct shape. And if you collided with the collectible item, but the type was not the same, your score gets reduced by one, and then we destroy the collectible item. Uh, so that's that one. Um, the collectible item has a public item type, um, a reference to its sprite renderer, and a couple of public um, variables for the sprites assets themselves. And when the game starts, it gets the sprite renderer. It updates the sprite, which is a switch uh, statement, which then sets the sprites to the correct um, sprite assets depending on the type. And then also increments the item spawner item count. Um, get sprite is a method that makes it easier for you to get the sprite of the objects, the current, um, the sprites, the correct sprites for the item type that you pass in. So if you look in the player script, you'd see we get, you say update sprites, get sprites. So this one gets, um, in update type, we set the type of the player to a random type, uh, almost random type, actually loops. Um, and then here we try to get the correct sprites to make sure that it is uh, the type and the image you see on the screen are the same thing. And then here we have it such that if the collectible item collides with anything, it gets destroyed. And when it gets destroyed, Unity automatically calls this method and it decrements the item counts by one. Uh, now in the item spawner, we have static integers that are uh, the item count and the max item count. Um, this are set so that you cannot have more than 15, the max item count set to 15. So you can't have more than 15 um, collectible items in the active at the same time. Um, the bounds um, is set to get the size of the screen and convert it into um, coordinates that you can use to, you, you can then query to pick a random position on the on the screen. Um, currently, we're doing a random exposition, which is it gets the a random value between the minimum and the maximum of the bounds and the position of the item itself in the world. And here we have update. Uh, the timer. This is a very, very simple timer um, script that reduces. So here we have the timer set to zero and the interval to two. So what happens is every frame, the timer is reduced. The value of the timer is reduced. If the value is zero, is less than zero. Um, the timer is set to a random between the current interval and um, 150 times the, the sorry, yeah, 150 percent of the interval. So if you have it set to one, it will be a random value between one and 1.5. If you set it to two, it will be a random value between two and three, and then it then spawns and it now calls the spawn item code. Uh, the spawn item code basically takes the checks if you have assigned a value to collectible item. If you haven't, then it doesn't do anything. If it has, if it, um, if you have, then it then checks. Oops, sorry. It then checks if your item count is less than your max item count. If it is, it then proceeds to create 
an instance of that, that prefab that I meant that you created earlier. And you can then it then randomly sets the type of the object. Okay, um, so that's it for all of that code. Um, so one thing to notice because this is a random exposition, it takes the position of the item spawner. So if you wanted to make the item spawn closer to the ground, you could just move, select the item spawner in the hierarchy and move it all the way down. And when you press play, what happens is the items appear from over there. Right. Um, you can also duplicate it and move it up. And what happens in this case is that you now have two um, item spawners that are spawning items ran almost randomly. And yeah, that is the game we built. Um, do you have any questions? Um, so if you wanted to bring the item spawner closer with time, um, if you could write, you can modify the, so let me delete the first one. You could modify the script and in your updates, you could, um, then say something like um, transform the position is equal to the uh, near like the three and bracket are going to be taken um, the current position of the vector of the item spawn and do like transform the position the x comma transform the position the y minus let's use um let's use uh, a method uh, a value called descent rate and the uh, sign and we're going to do this. Um, then we need to make sure that this value is defined. So we'll come up here and say public floats descent rate equals 1f. So this would mean it would drop down by one every um, second. Good. Oops. My bad. I missed a bracket. I'll come to my. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Really? This is what happens when you are coding <coughs> live. Oh, and then that's the cool thing about Unity. It automatically tells you where there are errors in your code, so it's a lot easier to build. Okay, um, so what you can look at over here is, as you can see, it's constantly dropping, and where the objects are falling from, it's dropping. Now, because we didn't put a limit on it, it will eventually pass through the world and keep dropping the items. And because the items are falling, it will keep spawning until it hits the max count, at which point it will stop spawning. Um, I'm sure you can. Pretty much figure out how to limit it so much that it doesn't go through the ground. So if I was to drop this to like a 0 0.05, zero five, it then starts dropping really, really slowly. So as time goes on, it drops. <clears throat> but really good question. Okay. Um, any other questions? You can basically ask me anything. I think that's what that means. Yeah, me.
Um, so, so, so I have a question. Yes, um, what ahead. would you say is, would um, be a very valuable skill for someone that is looking out to building something like what you just built? Or maybe like a guide, a beginner guide? Um, okay, so for beginner guides, um, Unity actually does have a lot of um, learning, learning tutorials. So if you look under tutorials, like in your Unity Hub, that comes when you install Unity, the Learn tab has a lot of scripts that teach you what you need to know and also has, you can go to learn.unity.com for a lot more. And it also comes with like projects that you can download, play around with, and basically let, look through their code to see how how um, they were built. Um, a good skill set to have would be a base knowledge of C sharp. Like I feel like that's the skill you need actually. Yeah. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the learn part, that's Microsoft Learn, right? Um, for Unity specific tutorials, it's learn.unity.com. It's the link is also here. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Oh, and uh, don't forget to save. But yeah, um, as you can see, we built a game in uh, what well, less than an hour. Um, I think I can do like this. Is to do to I'm gonna write a new folder here. I'm going to basically build an exe file that you could share with people. If you wanted to. So this is how you would package the game to share with your friends, family, enemies, you know. And depending on how big or complex your project is, um, it might take a while to load. So it might take a while to build it as an AXE. And as you can see, we have that running it. There we go. Oops. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. That's is that. Any other questions? Um, quick question. What if I want to can I like generate a link? Say I want someone to see what I've done. So if there is there like a link someone can go to if I'm done with doing something like what's the deployment like? Ah, I see. Okay. Um so for that it depends on the platform you're targeting. Um so like this gives you a standalone EXE and um the accompanying folder. Right, so what happens there is you just have an exe. If you wanted to, you could upload that to your website, put it on Dropbox, put it on OneDrive, and share the link with people. Right, like you can just zip it up and share it however you want. Um, I think, yeah. And then um, for Android, for example, for Android, you would have to, it would build an, uh, what's that thing called? An APK which you can then upload to the Google Play Store and share with people. Um, for UWP, again, 
you get a standalone um, on door or app X that you can also share however you want, or you can use um, Visual Studio to upload it to the to deploy it to the um, Macintosh store. And, and once it's on the store, you can you can share the link with people to have them download it as well. So yeah, um, as long as you have your built binary, which is the, the EXE, the AppX, or the, the APK, you can share it however you uh, however you like. Um, Israel in the comments says that building a game affects your PC depending on the complexity of the game. Say my PC can run Unity fairly. Does it begin to lag when the complexity of the game increases? Uh, well, yes and no. First and foremost, depends on how busy your machine is. Um, the other thing is Unity isn't particularly um, processor intensive unless the code that you write is something that's processor intensive. Um, so basically your, my, your mileage is varies and depends on what you, you build. So if you were to build a 3D game, for example, and put um, assets that have like five, like 20 million po um, polygons, and then of, it's very, very likely that your computer would lag when you're trying to run that. I hope that answers your question. Okay, um, so I will just go through a quick recap of um, what we went through today. Um, so we started out by creating a new Unity project. Um, I explained that the, the hierarchy shows you a list of everything that is in your scene. Uh, the scene view actually shows you the thing and um, allows you move and manipulate objects. Um, I showed that the inspector has uh, shows you the properties of the object and the components that are attached to it. So the transform, uh, sprite renderer, and the box collider. I also showed how to add components to objects by clicking the add components um, button here. An alternate way of adding components to a thing would be to click the component button here and find the thing you're looking for. And Unity has a whole lot of uh, components that you can use to build your games. Um, I showed how to create a prefab here, and we can just go ahead and replace our walls with a prefab of a wall. So we create a wall here, and we can delete this wall and drag this one actually straight into the scene and drop it there. And it's also a prefab. So if we're to select the wall here and change the color of the sprite to red, it changes both of them. Um, the console shows the outputs of your of what Unity is doing and what your code does. And uh, what else does show? And you can always double click to create a to open your scripts in your IDE of choice. Uh, I did not show you how to create a script, so you can to create a new script. You can go to assets, create, C sharp script, and then uh, you can name it whatever you want. So let's call this um, maybe hello world, and if you double click it, you see you can tell I put the, the boiler split stuff here. Um, it inherits from mono behavior, which is an internal Unity class. Uh, it has a start method and an update method. And if I wanted to, I could say debug.log, which is the equivalent of print in, I think, JavaScript. And I can pass in a message that says, hello, world. All right. <clears throat> now, if I open Unity, it reloads, and I can create an empty object, rename it to hello world, and add the hello 
world scripts. So, and when I press play, Unity in the console says hello world. And cool thing with the console here is you can also double click on a message to take you to where that message was called in the script. So with that, um, we are basically done with this project. Um, I, I will be sharing the, uh, what's that thing called? I'll be sharing the um, scripts shortly. Uh, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And uh, over to you, Kendra and Israel. <laughs>